Hey guys, what's up? Selvift here, and today I'm going to be doing a video I probably should have done a long time ago, which is uh, frequently asked questions, just answering some of the most common questions I get on social media and uh, when I'm streaming. So, the first one that I get a lot is, uh, what are you doing now, now that I'm retired? Really simple answer, I'm full-time streaming and I'm absolutely loving it. You can pretty much see me on five, maybe sometimes six days a week, and especially during LCS. Um, I'm co-streaming and people seem to really like it. And I've been really enjoying doing that. So the second question that I get a lot is why did you retire? That's a really, really long answer. And I could probably make an entire video just about that. But to basically sum it up quickly, I just didn't feel like competing anymore. I mean, competing was something that I love doing for, for 10 whole years. But um, I think I reached a point in my career where first, it was expected of me to win LCS and anything below winning LCS would basically be considered a failure, right? It'd be considered a step down because I'd been winning so much. And I, every single year that I came in, I felt really, really good about it. I felt like my, my, you know, this is a team I really believed in. This is an environment I really believed in. Um, but when Storm retired, I really didn't feel that same level of of confidence that I normally do. And that's like kind of like strike one. It's like, oh, well, you know, it's like my, my one of my closest friends, one of, one of the best players in the entire league that uh, I basically joined TSM to play with is retiring. That obviously weighed on me a lot. And it made me really conflicted because I know that he would obviously do well as a coach. But um, to be honest with you guys, being a coach has absolutely less impact than being a player. Um, Soren was like, half coaching the team. I mean, this is just what a ve any veteran player is supposed to be able to do, right? They're supposed to be able to coach the team as a player while they're playing and performing at like an extremely high level. And that's exactly what Soren did. And I felt like we, us doing that together, yeah, it was it was really important for, the, for why we were able to win LCS and why we were so successful together. The second thing is, Basically, there's, there's nothing left for me to do in my entire career except for continue to win LCS and rack up like domestic accolades and then try to make it out of groups XD. Like that was like the, just the thorn in my side, like for the longest time, you know, like just to destroy the meme. I know that I made finals on my side, but I never made it out of groups at Worlds, obviously. It's such an unfulfilling uh, goal to have in, in your career, right? Like this is something the community made up. Uh, and so like, it's something that I obviously was annoyed at, but at the same time, it's not, very, it's not a really big accomplishment guys to make it out of groups of worlds. Um, the, the real accomplishment is to make it uh, to the finals. And then if you ask, you know, G2, if they're, if they're happy with making it to the finals, they'd be like, fuck no, like we came to win it all. And so the real accomplishment is to, to win worlds. Um, and like, it sounds ridiculous for any player from LCS to say that they, they want to win worlds. That's what you, that's what you want. That's what you like set for yourself every single year. You want to be the best player in the world. You want to be on the best team in the world. Yeah, I just felt like that was kind of slipping away. After season 10 Worlds, I talked to Core. You know, we both didn't make it out of groups. And I was talking to him like, what do you, what do you think is like wrong? You know, what do you think is missing? Um, and he said something that I totally agree with, which is every year the gap just gets bigger. There was like a meme way back in the day, which is like the gap is closing. Yeah, like how are we going to close the gap, right? But it, it does seem, I totally agree with Core and that it seems like it's it's further and further away. It's less and less attainable every year. Um, that's what I really wanted from myself is to just win Worlds once. And I know that that's like a huge tall order, but that obviously had a huge impact on why I decided to retire because Soren retiring, talking to Core and, and realizing that uh, my dream is getting further and further away, having the feeling of like, am I going to, Am I gonna like double down and practice even harder than I normally do? Which it was extremely, extremely hard. Or do I want to move on to the next chapter of my life and see if I can be successful in that? And I decided that streaming is something that I never really truly gave it my all in. And I really wanted to see how far I can take it because I've been streaming on and off for 10 years and I've always gotten good viewership and people always seem to like it, but I just never really took it and like ran with it. So, oh, lastly, playing on stage was a really big factor for me uh, as far as like fulfillment in competing. I almost forgot this. this is absolutely huge. There's a clip of Reckless saying that uh, if L if LEC was no audience for another year, he would have retired. I know that this probably doesn't really resonate with like a lot of people out there, but I think for, for me, playing in front of a crowd and especially in high pressure situations and big moments, hearing like the crowd just screaming and getting that fucking insane adrenaline rush was such a big part of being a pro player. Um, and it was so fulfilling. And then thinking back on the last one that we had on TSM, 
One of the craziest runs in LCS history, I think. The first time that there ever is a loser's bracket, we come out of the loser's bracket, do crazy things, reverse sweep, like come back from Infernal Soul, um, beat every single underdog team, beating like C9, FlyQuest, TL right after we like, it's just absolutely insane, right? Like if that happened, in my mind, if that happened with a crowd, it would have been completely unforgettable. But to me, now that I've went through that, it's actually just a blip in my career memory because it's just not nearly as cool to be playing online as it is to be playing um, live. That's basically it. Those are, those are probably the three main reasons. Uh, I spent a lot of time on that question, but the next question that I get a lot of the time is related to that, which is, do I regret retiring? Um, the answer is absolutely not. I was super, I was super afraid that I would regret it when I first made the decision. And now that I've been streaming consistently and started to get my like feet on the ground with it, I absolutely do not regret it a single bit. Um, I think it's super awesome what I'm doing now and I'm really, really happy. And I think it shows when I'm streaming that I'm actually in a way better mood than I normally am. And I have a lot of energy and I'm super just happy with my life. And I'm happy with the way that my stream has been growing. For me, I feel like the, like what I perceive as like the soul of LCS is like a little bit gone. Playing in it, I just feel like I wouldn't have nearly as much fun as I did in the past. You know, it's like that chapter of LCS being what it was to me in my mind and, and having that like essence. Yeah, it's been a little bit diminished. I can't tell what percentage of that is the fact that it's played online. It's just like these kind of like pseudo random online matches or, uh, you know, for other factors, but don't regret it whatsoever. Uh, next question I get all the time. Am I ever coming back? Um, prop 99.99% no basically the answer is no i guess you can never count it out right like it's it's like you can never say never to anything um but really the answer is no uh, barring something absolutely crazy happening i don't think i'm ever coming back and then so when i'm doing the co-streams i get a lot of questions about like well you have all this insight about what a team should be doing and obviously like people know that i was the primary shot caller on a lot of the teams that i played on so why don't you do coaching first off coaches make a fraction a ridiculously small fraction of what you could be making not only as a player but as a streamer it's not even close right we're talking like completely completely different ballparks for uh income and second not only that is not only is it impractical right because let's just screw the money like let's just let's just say i, I, don't, I don't i don't really need any more money the the point is that i don't really want to um coaching is something that if i was to do it I would be so competitive at it. I would want to spend literally every hour of my day either helping my players improve or studying the game. And I wouldn't really want to do anything else because it would piss me off if, if I felt like somebody on another team, a coach was outperforming me or working harder than me. I just wouldn't be able to, to do it. Yeah, I, I would be back to being that ultra competitive person. And I don't think really anything would change about my life between being a coach and a player because I would just spend all my time either playing or studying league, except I would be making like way less money and I would have way less impact than just if I was literally in the game making the calls. I would be having to teach my players, et cetera, et cetera. So it's just something that I'm not interested in doing whatsoever. I briefly thought about it, but then I realized that like, I just don't have the patience to be a coach. Um, I would way rather be actually doing the things than sort of facilitating my team to be able to do those things. And I know that it just takes a certain type of personality and I don't, I don't know if I would be like a good fit for it. I get a really common question for me is what's my favorite roster or like what's my favorite memory? So this one is actually really hard for me to answer and I feel like I've given a lot of different answers and people are like, wait, last time did you say this? And it's like, I have a lot of favorite memories, okay? It's hard for me to just pick one. There's so many good times that I, I kind of like scan through and I'm like a couple just like always rise up to the top. So the first one that, I, that, that a lot of people remember is in season five when I won for the very first time on CLG, I felt like I got rid of a huge demon, which is I, I, Double Lift is going to be uh, one of those players that just can't win anything. He'll, he'll never win LCS. He'll never win a championship. And then uh, on CLG in season five, we played in front of the biggest venue ever up to that point, And we ended up 3 0 TSM, the favorites for the tournament so that was unbelievable and to do that with my close friends doing it with afro you know rush hour popping off getting a penta that was like that was a great moment it was a really amazing memory and um it was just something that i'll never forget because the feeling of that and and seeing like looking out in the crowd and seeing everyone just screaming and chanting clg was 
completely sick. Another one is just my memories entirely of like season six. Um, going from playing with Yellow Star and like barely losing in the finals and then replacing Yellow Star with like this rookie player that we I scouted from solo queue. I just literally looked at the top support players in solo queue and was like, let's try these guys out. And then uh, having Biofrost, Vincent, like meeting him for the first time and seeing that he was this really shy kid. He was super inexperienced, right? He'd only been playing solo queue, but then taking that roster all the way, winning LCS, and then taking that roster to Worlds. Uh, we don't want to talk about what happened at Worlds, but it was just, it was crazy. It was a crazy year. It was a crazy memory. We were super dominant. It was just a beautiful time. Uh, that my first like two years on TSM was, was a beautiful time. And then the other, the third memory that always pops up for me is being on TL and winning four splits in a row. And then specifically when I was at MSI with Core, I felt something I had never really felt before, which is like, wow, I'm here. I'm here at MSI and like we're hanging with the best teams in the entire world. IG, SKT, G2, and and it's pretty even. I don't even know if Core remembers this. We're about to go up on stage. We're, we're walking in a hallway, right? I'm talking to him about bot lane. I'm, I, like he can tell I'm probably a little bit anxious about the match. We're about to go up on stage and play IG, the best team in the world. They just won Worlds. And he says to me, he, Peter, today we're the best bot lane. And I just remember thinking about that as like, wow, that's how I feel every single time I go up on stage in LCS. But Core feels that way when he goes up to play against fucking Jackie Love and Bowland. Like he, he feels that way every single day, no matter what. And that's the kind of confidence that you need to compete at the highest level. We obviously went up on stage and ended up beating IG, which was super sick. It was a really amazing memory for me because I just remember the feeling of just like being able to hang with the best. Uh, it was really fulfilling and it was, obviously we made it really far at the tournament and it was extremely cool for me. Those are my favorite memories, I guess, top three. Um, next question, more LCS related is, what do I think of like X team? You know, what do you think of TSM? What do you think of C9, uh, Dane Toss, et cetera? To be honest with you guys, I feel like um, when you go on, when you look, look at like uh, LCS related talent and broadcast and stuff, they're gonna they're gonna spend a lot of time fluffing up um, and, and driving narratives and stories because it keeps people engaged. All these sort of narratives make LCS more interesting and I don't blame them a single bit for um trying to make an engaging story out of it but for me i always feel like the lcs regular season is a training ground for playoffs and i've spent a lot of times coming from a really low seed into playoffs you know fifth or sixth place in the regular season not looking like a very strong team but always seeming like a team with strong potential and then coming to playoffs and crushing it because playoffs is really all that matters unless you don't make it but playoffs lets you show what you're really made of if the regular season is studying for the test then Playoffs is the test. It's really interesting to me that there there are certain things where like I feel like a team might be performing better than they actually are in terms of skill level. They're getting away with really crazy wins. Uh, also, a team might be losing games um, just completely through one person's mistake or draft or you know, it, and it's not really that reflective of the of the team's actual skill level, and it's really hard to say. So I hate, uh, or I like I don't hate it, but I don't really like to make big strokes of just like, this team's gonna suck, this team's gonna be good. You kinda just have to see it week by week. Even though I could have a strong opinion of a team playing really badly one week, I could have the next week watch them play and be like, wow, they're playing so much better. And it could change just like that. So basically what I'm saying is, uh, it's really hard to take away stuff from the regular season. Not only is it best of ones, but teams are like, just trying to find their groove and random things can really happen in BO1. Um, okay, so the next one, which is a bit spicier, is uh, what do I think about the import rule? Basically, my thought about it in a, in a really shallow way is LCS exists because it entertains the fans. And for me, personally, I don't really speak for anyone else, but I don't think it's entertaining to watch five imports play against each other in LCS. I think that there's examples of great imports uh, like Core and Bjergsen and Jensen who came here and and are you know playing amazing and they care about interacting with the fans and and they're like you know their personality really shows and people respect and they kind of like to support people with good work ethic and that have really tried hard to be a part of the lcs and feel like they're connected but anyways the point is that um if L I, I don't find it entertaining to watch five imports play against each other that i've never heard, probably never heard of or might have heard of a couple i guess the same question can be asked like do i care about watching five random amateur American players play against each other uh, that I've also never heard of? And the answer is no. 
Um, so the level of play matters a little bit, but also it, it's hard. It's hard for me to say. It's hard for me to say. Um, you know, like is it going to is it going to be like outweighed by the games being more exciting? My gut instinct is probably not. I do think that the whole situation is like a bit ridiculous, um, but I'll just say it pretty definitively to you guys that I probably wouldn't like it if a lot of the teams in LCS were just all imports. That's that's pretty much it. Yeah, actually, that completely wraps up all of my questions that I normally get. This probably wraps up the FAQ. Yeah, I don't really have much else to say. It's been really nice. It's been really fun. I hope to uh, see you guys around, hopefully on my stream, or if you want to just you know catch the highlights on my youtube we upload them pretty regularly as well so thank you guys for coming and uh listening this is actually way longer of a video than i expected 20 minutes so um i will probably just end the video now and start my stream see you guys and thanks for watching